Since you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you're curious as to if we actually finished the van build. Well, spoiler alert, kind of. And if you watch till the end of the video, you'll see exactly what I mean because we've done the majority of the tasks that are really time consuming, but we still have a few more things to do before this is truly a finished and polished product. Oh, and side note, if you have any questions about our van build, we've been compiling some of the most frequently asked questions to answer at some point. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's rewind to what was probably the most difficult week of van build that we've had since we picked up our Ford Transit. Thanks to our neighbor, we have a half inch drill bit. The very first one I was trying to do with a 3 8 inch drill bit and kind of like wiggle it to get the hole big enough. Didn't work very well. Now we have a half inch drill bit, works very well. The dowels look okay. Should keep stuff in when we're rattling down the road, right? The boss says yes. Let's put it in. Actually, even better idea. Oh, the granola bars fit. That's all that matters. Even better idea, faceplate and then install. Looks pretty good. And we did it all ourselves. It's the best part. Shall we put it in a van? That's a real moment of truth. How do you feel about that? Look at that. Oh, she looks nice. <laughs> You really want to unveil all of our secrets to the camera. So we made a mistake. <laughs> it's just a small one. We accidentally made one of the cupboard doors just a touch too long. And we're faced with a couple options. Option one, make it again. Option two, lob a little off the bottom. Option three, lob a little off the top and the bottom. Option three. I think option three. The only slight dilemma is this crown molding that we purchased. As you can see, it's indented in the middle. It's glued onto the frame from here and here and not from here. So I'm a little worried that if we cut it, that the edge won't be glued down and then we have a bigger crack to fill. So. Decisions, decisions, decisions. This is breaking my heart. Doesn't it hurt? Especially because it's in pen, which means there's literally no going back. Wait till I break the jigsaw out. No. How do you feel then? Soft whimpering cries. That's pretty clean. Look at how well those layers are melded together. Look at this. <laughs> Let's finish this. Countertop? Yes. Countertop? Oh yeah, looking good. This is our shelving unit. And in the original build plans, we had planned on putting cupboards back behind us. It just ended up being too much work and we decided to put shelves instead. We do have a third shelf that's gonna run along the top, but we've come up with some different ideas about exactly how we wanna do it, which includes putting like a laundry hamper up there and maybe like a gearbox up here. So we have to go back to the drawing board and mock up a plan for that. This has been highly contested. The only thing we agreed on was how deep the shelves should be, which we both disagreed with ourselves afterwards once we went to go install them. We're just gonna run with it. I think we'll come to the same conclusion eventually. Anyways, I am super pleased with how they turned out. I think they look beautiful. We changed our staining technique and I think it worked a lot better. We do have to trim out the obvious cracks behind us. So we're gonna use some of that nice trim that we have left over from making our cabinet faces. This is not entertaining YouTube <laughs> content. This is literally watching paint dry, only it's glue. Pull it up a bit. Up, up, up. Yep, I mean like this edge from there, this front edge up. Like I gotta cut the slope of the roof first. How do people do this? Is there like an exact science that we don't know about? This is recommended by every professional van builder in the history of van builders. Because once you've published one video on the internet, you are a professional, professional. van builder. Exactly, so are we professional van builders, let's cut. Nice hack job. Thanks bud. Hacking darts, breaking hearts. You would never do that. This right here is the downside to the cardboard method. That's looking not so bad. On camera, it looks great. Does it? In person, it looks <laughs> fucked. Oh my shit. <laughs> Richard decided my method wasn't working for him, so now he's doing it himself. 
he's he's brought out all the scientific tools trying to look like he actually <laughs> knows what he's doing. This is harder to do than I expected. The slope just got cut a little too slopey. Mm. Cardboard. 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 Casualties! Let's <laughs> go in there. I just want to point out that my scientific method worked flawlessly, but yet somehow I'm still losing. This is what I made in high school art class. It's a beautiful piece of cardboard with some green painter's tape, and it fits the shape of our vehicle. I'm going to be selling it online as an NFT. I'll leave the link in the description below. <laughs> and by the way, this is Kirsten's mess. That's his mess. I have nothing to do with that. This is Kirsten's mess. That's Richard's mess. This is my cardboard cutout. NFT. NFT. Oh. It's bad. our best one yet. To be honest, we don't know exactly what we want to do with this yet. If we want to leave this edge the way it is, if we want to trim it back a little bit, if we want to put a little curvature in here. So I think we're going to go sleep on this one, come back tomorrow with some fresh eyes and um, make decisions. Much later. This mess represents how I'm feeling about life right now because we've run into the exact same problem that we had with the electrical cabinet. And that problem is that these cabinets are too big for the hinges that we bought. We made these cabinets so that they would fit from the top of the frame to almost the bottom of the frame. And with the hinges that we have, there is quite a substantial gap between the top of our cabinet face and the top of the wood frame, which is a bit of a problem because these cabinet faces completely overhang our cabinet. And we don't really like the look of that. So what we're gonna be doing is shaving a half inch off the bottom. Kirsten is probably going to hate the lack of symmetry for the history of eternity, but I promise her if she hated it that much, we would just make a few new cabinet faces knowing the right dimensions to actually build them properly. It's gonna feel a lot better having cabinet faces that look like they're meant for the cabinet that they're on. So like I said, we are gonna be just cutting a part off the bottom here and moving the poles to what we think are gonna be a much more friendly location right here. This has been much more difficult than expected for a number of reasons, but this works, right? Yeah. How many more now? Three more? Three more. Yay. This is the new prototype. This will have to be adjusted. Except, is it really a prototype if you've already made them all and have to fix them? Today was certainly one of the hardest van build days that we've had, and that's just kind of the reality of van build. Things are not always going to go according to plan, and things are not always going to go the way you want them to. And the reality is, you didn't even see us bring things in and out of the van 700 times trying to get them right and making way more holes in our finished cabinet doors than we actually wanted to. We both want to end today on a high, and that means we're going to take on something that we hope is going to be an easier task. It's magic. It now levitates on its own. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, this is how Rich and Kirsten's electrical system is set up. I know it looks inconvenient, but it saved us a ton of room in the bench. Just finished wiring our DC to DC charger switch. We made sure to put it in a convenient location so it's easy to turn on and off. It should make our life easy because both the driver and the passenger can access it to get our battery charge in. We're gonna be covering this with a piece of plywood, but I just figured I would put some tuck tape in there instead, just because, uh, yeah, we want to keep vapor from getting behind the walls as much as possible. If there's any reason we're going to go over budget, it's this stuff. This is our third roll of tuck tape, and each roll is $12. Yeah, that's going to really send our X dollar van build into over budget. <laughs> I don't want to give it away because we're going to share how much or how little we spent in an upcoming video.
We've been hard at work finishing all kinds of little tasks in order to get the van build as done as possible by the end of this week. And that includes cutting our old four inch bed foam from our minivan to our new bench foam, which will be covered by master seamstress Karen at some point. But more importantly than that, we put in our bed. This is a six inch full size double memory foam bed mattress and this feels so luxurious in comparison to our minivan and we did really prioritize having a nice spacious bedroom in here and my goodness is this mattress comfortable it feels super spacious we even have a shelf beside us here i think we're gonna sleep pretty well in the mountains honey after much trials and tribulations we've finally finished putting our upper cabinet faces in and our kitchen as well which is honestly so relieving because I'll tell you, the hinges are definitely not the simplest thing to put in. There is one other place though that we have cabinet faces that isn't fully installed yet and that's the water chest that sits over here. The reason we haven't put it in yet is because, well, after some deliberation, we decided to change things up. When I originally designed this cabinet, it was going to house a toilet and our water jugs, both on rollers. But once we got the rollers, the size of them, it just didn't end up working out that we could have it all together. So what we ended up doing was taking the rollers out of our water cabinet and bringing the walls together to keep them in as snug as possible. And somehow, miraculously, in all of this, we made room for a tiny, tiny toilet. And I'm not talking about just like a pee bottle, like a real porta potty. So in this compartment that was originally going to house the toilet and then didn't end up housing the toilet and now again ends up housing the toilet. We have our garbage, some room for some cleaning supplies, and then in this back section here, we'll sit our tiny Tetford 135 toilet. This fits perfectly. We had to do some funky stuff to get it to work, including not putting sides all the way through, but once it's all said and done, we're gonna have a toilet, we're gonna have a garbage, and we're gonna have room for cleaning supplies. Our water cabinet lost the rollers, which means now we have a free door, but we do have a slight dilemma. Because this is so tight in here, there's no room for hinges on the side for this door. And if we hinge this going up, it doesn't really work out too good, and down just seems dangerous. So we think we're gonna take this and magnet it in, and hopefully the magnets are strong enough to keep that in place while we're driving. But there's also one small special feature that we did build in. This top here is a trap door that leads to all of our plumbing. So it's not quite set up yet, but in here you'll be able to see and access all of our plumbing components, including our water pump, our accumulator, our filter, the whole nine yards. Now that we are done with that mess and the water chest is completely finished, it's time to move on to our very last brand new skill set that we have to whip out in this van build, I hope. And that's tiling our kitchen. We've chosen to use basic white subway tiles because we've done a lot of stuff in this van like the Murphy bed that's designed to stand out and accent the look that we're going for. And the subway tile does the exact opposite. We feel like it really blends in nicely and the white tiles will match with, well, pretty much anything else that we put in the van. started how it's going <laughs> it looks totally different like totally different now this is how it's going now Ooh, subway tile what color <laughs> grout are we using i don't know grout master flex either sand or haystack or linen or white <laughs> This is probably one of the easier tasks we've had to do. We had a lot of doubt about if we could get it done in one afternoon. I don't know the time, but I'm pretty sure it only took us an hour, which is really not bad for how meticulous it actually looks. I'm really happy we went with a subway tile because honestly, 
I feel like that took out all of the guesswork of it. That was a pretty dirty job, at least for me, because I was the one running the tile saw. Like every job we've done, you might as well wear your work clothes because you're going to get dirty anyways. So I guess the answer to the question, did we finish our van? No, we didn't, but we got really close. Things are looking good. I think in the next couple days, we'll be basically just a few pieces of trim away from actually being done. As always, a special shout out to all of our patrons for supporting this kind of content. We're really looking forward to sharing all kinds of unique special content with you when we're actually out on the road, sharing tips and tricks and tactics for those of you who are interested in van life. And more of the behind the scenes content that we don't normally share in our vlog and some stories from the road. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the van build series. It's almost over. We're gonna have a tour for you at some point. Point, but we want to do the tour in a really nice setting so it might not happen until we get either up north or up west. That is only a matter of weeks away <laughs> rather than months now that we're finally basically done the van. Thanks again for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed and we will see you in the next video. Bye!